as an academic, I can work on any project, but it's not so interesting to work on technology that no one cares about. CO2 storage is actually a very interesting topic. The fact that we are now getting multiple projects online in the North Sea and seeing this becoming a major industry of itself is a very exciting thing to be part of. The responsibility of scientists is to provide knowledge, right? And unbiased knowledge so that uh, the public and politicians and policymakers can, you know, make the laws based on truth. CO2 storage happens two kilometers below the ground and has never been seen by any humans. So the first priority for the fluid flower was to show people what is CO2 storage so they could see it with their own eyes and we as scientists can image this and analyze this and learn about the processes. The physical model is actually a layered sand model which mimics the subsurface properties in an actual reservoir. And we can basically divide the model into three different parts. So number one is the ceiling layer, which is consisting of a very fine sand, which is in effect holding the CO2 in the system. We call it a barrier, right? So it's impermeable to gas. Then we have different types of sand that constitute heterogeneity that we also find in nature. And then we have the high inactivity sand, which allows us to inject CO2 at a high rate, which is also important for the CO2 storage. As the CO2 comes in, we will have two injection points here. You can see it here. And the CO2 is buoyant, so it flows upwards, but then it hits these layers with a lower permeability and it accumulates underneath the seal here. And then we speed up time. And now you will see something very interesting. The yellow uh, CO2 is actually moving downwards. And this is because the CO2 dissolves into the water and it becomes heavier than the blue water. So the yellow water goes down and it actually goes away from the seals here and it goes towards the bottom. The fact that it sinks is of course extremely important. It means it can never leak. And this happens in our experiment and it also happens in reality. As a mathematician, one of my main roles is to say how can this be relevant for what happens several kilometers below the, the ground surface. And it's relevant because the main mechanisms we see, the main processes we see, are actually the same. So the CO2 dissolves into water. In addition, you have a capillary uh, trapping, which means that the CO2 becomes disconnected. It basically breaks up to millions upon millions of small bubbles that are trapped within the porous media. So it's basically stuck. And over time, the CO2 becomes a mineral. It becomes a, a rock, a solid phase, and then it's permanently stored. Nothing happens. The way. Oh, there is a, yeah, oh, here it is. It's already starting. Okay. So you're seeing some, some gas bubbles here. You're already starting to see that. Uh, Today we have an audience from Ventas Aldea. And, and, and this is always fun because when we have an injection with audience, we get to be there on site. We get to narrate. We get to explain live what is going on. And it is a very fun show. Instead of a 3D. We're learning from some of the best research groups there are in the world here. The experiments that we're doing here that gave us the safety and confidence that CO2 injection on the field scale will work, it will be safe and it will be done according to our visions that we have today. And I think this is where we are now, where academia has already provided a lot of the knowledge that the industry now needs to successfully implement carbon storage. If it's executed by professionals in, in good geological areas, it is a safe technology. Essentially, CO2 will be stored, quote-unquote, forever. It's not uh, the idea that we have a silver bullet that will save the world, but we have an important part of the puzzle that will bring us to a net zero future.